Hello there, my name's Scott, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Crown, which is a rebuildable dripping atomizer, which I've received directly from the manufacturer, who are based in the Philippines and go by the name of Flip Mines Project. Now, these guys don't have their own website yet, as far as I can tell, but they do have a Facebook page. And if you go along to their page at the uh, address here, they will have the information on there about international resellers. Before I start, I must point out I did receive it free of charge for the purpose of conducting a review, but my opinion of the product remains true on its network as always. Okay, let's go straight ahead and uh, show you in a bit more detail. Okay, so here I have the Crown, which is a uh, very small and compact little dripping atomizer. And this has been made in the Philippines by a company who go by the name of FMP Pinoy. And I believe the FMP stands for Flip Mines Project. Now, um, it's mainly made out of 304 grade stain. The still overall build quality is really good. Very nice machine little atomizer. But as you can see, you do have this sort of gold outer sleeve here. And this is going to act as part of the AFC or airflow control. And I will show you that a little bit later on in the review. Now, as I said, you know, this is a, obviously got a gold appearance. And when I first got it, I wasn't too sure if it was brass or gold plated. Now, where I've had this for probably around sort of five or six weeks now, it has started to pick up a little bit of wear and tear. And I can confirm it's definitely gold plated because if you look right, where is it here? You can actually see a uh, part of the plating is starting to uh, rub off a little bit, unfortunately. So, you know, if you're not into the uh, sort of gold look, Gold plating is very easy to remove. All you've got to do is basically just sort of polish it. It only goes on sort of literally microns thick. So if you want to get rid of it, just give it a, a hard polish. And if you want to keep your gold plating intact, then do not polish it. Always just uh, go over it with a nice sort of a damp cloth instead. Okay, so you've got uh, so quite a few sort of different setup options with this little atomizer. You can use uh, silica, eco wool, cotton wool, uh, mesh, etc, etc. And the best way to show all the nice features of this atty is to give you a guided tour. And then what I'll do is show you how I'm getting my one all set up. Okay, so starting on the base, you're going to find a 510 connection. And although it looks as though it may have an adjustable center pin, I don't think it actually is. I have gone at it with a screwdriver, and it seems to be done up very tightly, so I don't want to sort of force it in case it causes any damage. So although it looks adjustable, I don't think it actually is. Just underneath the connection, you're going to find your serial number. And just above it, some uh, rather strange engraving. Now, at first, I just assumed it was a, a bit of a weird sort of symbol or something like that. But if you look really, really carefully, I think it may possibly say FMP for the FMP Pinoy. Going around the outside of the body, you're going to find this sleeve. And this is going to act as your AFC or airflow control. Now, inside the top cap, you're going to find two large air holes, one on one side and one on the opposite side. And the idea is to adjust the airflow, you just need to spin the sleeve around and match the hole in the sleeve with the hole in the top cap. The sleeve has four different sized holes. You're going to find a large 2.5 millimeter hole, then a 2 millimeter hole, then 1.5, and then 1 millimeter. So at the moment, it's in its uh, largest setting with the 2.5 millimeter hole. If you want to give that a spin, it's now in the uh, tightest setting with the one millimeter hole. Keep on giving it a spin. It's now at 1.5, then uh, two, and then finally back to 2.5. And whatever happens on this side is also repeated on the opposite side as well. So it's basically been a setup uh, or designed to be used with a dual coil setup. So you always have airflow passing over each coil. On the very top of the crane, you're going to find space for a 510 drip tip. And all the ones that I've tried fit in there really nice and snugly. Now, they did also include this, but I'm not 100% sure if it's actually part of the crown package. So you will have to uh, check that, unfortunately. Uh, but it's a very nice drip tip. And as you can see, it's got a really sort of massive wide open bore. Makes it great for direct dripping. The uh, top cap is all held in position by these two O-rings there. And they do a really good job of keeping it on there nice and firmly. Not had any problems with leaks or anything like that. And the atomizer deck, you're going to find three terminals. So the middle one is going to be your positive, and the two outer ones are your negatives. Flathead screwdrivers, and nice little big, thick, chunky screws as well. Makes it a little bit stronger, and also a little bit easier to work with. And as you have got the uh, three terminals there, you can set it up with a single coil, dual coil, etc., etc. Okay, so what I'm going to do now then, is just show you how I've been getting my one all set up. 
and I'm going to be using uh, two coils and they're both going to be micro coils. I'm going to use some 0.32 millimeter canthal I'm just going to wrap the coils around this little sort of uh, position screwdriver I suppose you'd call it. Now obviously uh, different people have different methods of doing their coils and micro coils etc etc and this is just the way that I prefer to do my ones. So, but you know, whatever works for you, that's the best way to do it. Okay, so I'm going to wrap around sort of 10 coils around here. I'm just going to do it nice and tight, try and keep them as close together as possibly can. And once that's there, I want to just grab hold of a pair of pliers and just put it really nice and tight. And then what you should end up with is something that looks a little bit like that. And for the second coil, I'm just going to repeat the same process so that way I have two. Okay, so as you can hopefully see, I've just installed one coil simply by placing one end of the wire through the uh, negative terminal and the other end of the wire through the positive terminal. Once that's in place, I'm going to tighten up the negative but leave the positive unsort of tightened because obviously I need to install the other wire as well. But just tighten up the one side will help to hold it in place. And now I just need to repeat that process, but uh, from the opposite side. So insert one end through the central positive and the other end of the wire through the negative terminal. Push it all the way across. And once that's through, you can just take your screwdriver and tighten up both terminals. And then once the terminals are nice and tight, I'd just like to insert this screwdriver back through the coils just to sort of uh, straighten them up, make them look a little bit neater. Just do it very carefully. Right there, and then you can remove the excess pieces of wire by simply giving it a bit of a spin, and it should snap off nice and clean. Sometimes, that's it. Now for the next step, it's important to make sure that your coils are going to light up sort of nice and evenly. And what you will find using this way of sort of uh, setting up a micro coil is that when you first press the button, they basically won't fire up nice and evenly. As you can uh, hopefully see there, only some parts of the coil will lighten up, the rest of it is all quite dark. So what you need to do then is just uh, get it nice and hot and then grab hold of your tweezers and very carefully just squeeze the coils together on either end. And then eventually they should start uh, looking a little bit like that. Now for my wicking material, I'm going to be using some uh, cotton wool. And I will say, if you're going to use cotton wool, make sure your coils are completely cooled down. Otherwise, it's just going to burn as soon as it starts to uh, touch it. And never fire up your coils with dry cotton wool. Always make sure it's nice and wet before you hit that fire button. Okay, so I'd like to sort of try and keep the uh, cotton wool nice and fluffy. And I've just sort of squashed down the end there. I'm just going to feed it through one of the coils and grab it from the opposite end and just start to uh, put it through. And around there should be fine. And then I can just take a pair of cutters and just cut it off on this side. Like so. And the rest of it I'm just going to sort of uh, tuck in out of the way, but I'm going to do the opposite side as well first.
Then once the cotton wool wick has been installed inside both of the coils, you can just take a little screwdriver and just basically just tidy it up and just sort of tuck it out of the way, just so you've got like a little sort of bed of cotton wool underneath the, uh, the bottom there. And then what you should end up with is uh, something that looks a little bit like that. Okay, so I just want to stress one more time, don't press the fire button when your cotton wool is dry. Always make sure it's nice and wet before you hit the fire button now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just uh, completely soak it with some meat liquid. And hopefully, we'll get some vapour. Okay, so all that's left to do now then is attach the top cap. And like with uh, any atomizer, just make sure that the air hole is going to line up directly in front of the coil. And that way you get the most amount of vapour. This should be about there by the looks of it. So he's fine. Okay, so that is the crown. Let's go ahead, see what it vapes like. Okay, so that was the crown, and what I'll do now is go ahead and show you an action. So I'm gonna be using it on my uh, little silverback mod. The battery came with the charge around two minutes ago, so it should still be reading around 4.2 volts. I have got the uh, dual coil set up in there, and according to uh, one of my DNA20 mods, the combined resistance has come out at 1.9 ohms, so uh, not particularly low. Uh, for the e-liquid, as this is a, um, a dual coil set up with the big sort of gaping air holes, it's made in the Philippines. I feel it's only fair to sort of try and uh, do a bit of cloud chasing, as I know that's what's almost expected of a little atomizer like this. So for my e-liquid, I've got a bit of a custom brew where it's just going to be sort of 90% VG, 10% PG. Uh, it's just a tobacco flavour and 18 milligram strength. Okay, so uh, this is the crown. And as you can see, it produces plenty of vapour. Now, obviously, the amount of vapour you're going to get will be down to how you've got it set up. You know, you might only have a single coil in there. You might have a dual coil, a triple coil, quadruple coil. It's going to come down to what sort of a voltage you're pushing through those coils, the type of e-liquid, whether it's a PG-based e-liquid or a VG-based e-liquid. It's also going to come down to what sort of air, size, uh, air hole size you're going to use as well. The, uh, the small air hole is not going to produce as much vapour production as the, uh, the largest air hole, for example. And uh, you know, it's just going to be a case of sort of playing around with it and finding your own sort of personal setup. But you know, with the setup I've got here, getting you know, tons of vapour. For the. Uh, for the cloud chasers out there, or the vapour whores as I call them, you know, just so you can see how much of a cloud it's actually creating. Uh, I wouldn't normally vape like this, you know, I do quite enjoy it, I must admit, you know, every now and again it's nice to sort of set it up and try and create a, a stupid amount of vapour, but it's not really my sort of thing per se. I mean, I use uh, electronic cigarettes or personal vaporizers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, instead of cigarettes, so as long as it produces a, a, a decent amount of vapour comparable to what I used to get out of uh, smoking a cigarette, then I'm more than happy with that. But like I say, you know, every now and again, it is quite nice to sort of try and make the, uh, the most stupid sized clouds that you pos possibly can. And the good thing about this is that uh, it's uh, come out as a combined resistance of 1.9 ohms. And that just goes to show that you don't need to go sub-ohm to get a decent amount of vapour. You know, just a little uh, regular battery mod there. 1.9 ohm, or it is dual coils, but you know it's not a low ohm compared to what some of these other guys are using out there, uh, and you're still getting a really good amount of vapor, you know, as demonstrated.
you know, I don't think many people can really complain about the, uh, the amount of vapour that it's chucking out at the moment. Okay, so, you know, Bill Quality Wise, very nicely a machine, little atomizer, no problems there whatsoever in the actual machining. Obviously, one thing that does let it down, just that little bit is, uh, is the gold plating. One, I'm not overly keen on the gold. I would have much preferred it to be just the uh, stainless steel going around the uh, sort of airflow control ring or the part that actually makes up the crown. Obviously, because it does look a little bit like a crown, you can understand why it is gold plated. However, I have seen ones on the net though where um, it has just been stainless steel, so they may well offer you a choice of gold plated or just the regular sort of stainless steel. Now, if you've got one and you didn't like the gold, it's very easy to remove. You know, just a bit of wear and tear, it will sort of gradually uh, start to um, come away over time. I, it should last a little bit longer than what it has done at the moment. I've had it for around sort of five or six weeks, but if you do have gold plating and you want to get rid of it, the easiest way is to simply uh, keep on polishing it, a really hard polish. And uh, like I said, the gold only goes on literally microns thick, so it is very easy to actually remove. If you want to keep your gold on there for as long as possible, don't ever polish it. Just get a uh, bit of sort of fairy liquid and a bit of warm water and just give it a wipe over with a cloth and it'll bring it back to its nice sort of uh, shiny state and uh, without actually sort of um, removing it, if you see what I mean. So, you know, build quality wise, no problems at all, apart from, you know, the gold plating uh, has uh, shown signs of wear and tear over the time period that I've been, uh, over the time period that I've been using it. Incidentally, um, I am here. <laughs> Incidentally, I'm doing the old, uh, I think they call it a dragon inhale or, yeah, dragon inhale, I call it a direct lung inhale. Normally when I vape, I would just sort of, you know, suck the vapour into my mouth, then take me a PV out of my mouth and then sort of, uh, you know, breathe the, um, breathe the vapour in. That gives you that nice little kick in the back of the throat, which is what I like. Whereas a direct lung inhale is where you're, sort of taking it straight from the, uh, the outside of your mouth straight down into your lungs. Obviously, you know, different people like different things. It's not normally how I would uh, vape, but, you know, for things like this and getting the most amount of vapour production, you know, it goes down the treat. And, you know, you can just get no ridiculous amounts of vapour out of it. Just going to add a few more drops. Uh, there's uh, quite a few things about this atomizer that I really like. Uh, one second, let me just uh, concentrate on this. Um, obviously, you've got the adjustable air hole size, so you can go from a nice to uh, really sort of, well, fairly sort of tight jaw. You have got uh, the one millimetre hole there, and you've got the 1.5, a 2, and a 2.5, so you can have a tight jaw. You can have a sort of really wide sort of open and loose jaw. The other thing that I like about it is you've got a, I'm not too sure how you describe it, it's like a, um, like a deep sort of well, I suppose. So you can really sort of pack it out with loads of cotton wool and it allows you to add loads of e-liquid at a time. And that wall, that uh, channel, <laughs> that well, that's the one, you know, it, as well as allowing you to sort of pack it full of uh, cotton wool so you can add sort of quite a lot of e-liquid, I find it also helps to uh, prevent the liquid from then sort of pouring outside of the air holes. Quite a few of these uh, little dripping atomizers, you know, they work fantastic. But if you sort of put a bit too much juice in there, as soon as you start tilting it, the juice just comes straight out the air hole, which is, can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. And I've not really had that at all with the crown because you've got a nice little deep well. You know, it does a good job of uh, holding lots of e-liquid and actually keeping it in place as well. Now, if I just had this set up with like a, a strand of silica, so obviously that liquid is more sort of sloshing around, then it may be a different story. But if you uh, pack out the bottom bit with the cotton wool, you know, it, it vapes great, you're not getting any leaks out of it, and it holds, you know, a decent amount of juice as well. With the, um, uh, the air hole set to the biggest setting, which is the uh, 2.5 millimetres. You know, I'm still getting quite a nice warm vape, but uh, it definitely gets a little bit warm if you start to close off the air hole a little bit, I suppose, just because you've got less air sort of passing through it. But like I said, you know, as you start to uh, close off the air hole, the amount of vape you're going to get definitely does uh, decrease. Um, 
What else do I like it? The other good thing, I'm not too sure whether the Gyptic does come included. Unfortunately, I have sort of written off to um, FMP and uh, asked a few questions, for, for example, about the price. I've not actually had a reply yet, so I can't sort of give you all the information I'd like to give you. So I'm not too sure whether this drip tip does come included or, or not, but it is a, a fantastic drip tip to use with. Though. One, it looks great. And secondly, it's probably the uh, the widest board drip tip that I've ever come across. And uh, it's just extremely easy for us, you know, sort of pouring your e-liquid in there. You ain't got to worry about sort of trying to line it up, you know, literally just sort of get the nozzle and just squirt it in there. Uh, no problems at all. You know, it's just a stupid amount of vapour. But you know, a lot of people like that, you know, there seems to be a new sort of uh, culture. You've got like the old school vapours like myself who just sort of a decent amount of vapours, more enough to sort of keep us happy. We've got the, uh, the new sort of vapours out now where it's becoming more of a hobby rather than something to sort of keep you off the uh, tobacco. And I do like the older uh, cloud chasing. But you know, I just want to stress again, you know, a standard battery, standard voltage, 1.9 ohms, total resistance, still getting plenty of vapour out of it so you know you don't really need to go sub ohm to be able to get that decent amount of vapour production and the only reason I say about the uh, the sub ohms is that I can't help but notice that people seem to be going lower and lower and lower and a lot of the time these people are not really too clued up about sort of batteries you know they're going to be going well past these sort of amp limits now and obviously the lower you go with the uh, with the uh, resistance the more chances are of having an accident so you know please do your research before you get to a uh, too low on your own, so to speak. But like I said, you know, you know 1.9 ohms, 1.9 ohms combined resistance, standard sort of uh, battery in there, plenty of vapour. And obviously I'm taking like ridiculously uh, long inhales at the moment to try and sort of um, sort of accentuate the amount of vapour you can uh, get out of it, but we'll do a, a little sort of short drag as well, just add a few more drops to that. Just to show you, you can still get a, you know, a decent amount of vapour out of it as well, just by taking little, uh, little drags. You know, and for me, Nearly. That's uh, no, that's more than, more than an adequate amount of vapor. I don't need to add a few more drops of juice in there. It's tasting a, a little bit ropey. But, you know, like with any sort of electronic cigarette or personal vaporizer, the longer you the longer you inhale for, the more vapor you're going to get. The less time you keep it inside, the, you, the less time you keep it inside the <laughs> say, the less time you keep it inside your lungs. That's the that's the phrase. And then again, like the more vapor you're going to get as well. And I'll uh, finish off on uh, another biggie, just to uh, keep the cloud chasers at me. There you go. Okay, so uh, I'm not too sure what else I can really tell you about. You know, if you do fancy try one out, you see, try, I can't speak now. If you do fancy try one out for yourself, then uh, go along to their Facebook page at this address here. And uh, on there, they will have information about international resellers and you can also uh, contact them as well. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching and also come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e-sig-reviews.com. Cheers, guys. Happy vaping. See you later.